Harley, can you hear me? Hey there. I hear you. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. This is Harley Finkelstein, uh, president of Shopify. Are you in Ottawa today, Harley, or are you somewhere else? I'm, I'm actually in Toronto, and I want to say just before we jump into this, um, Voices is one of my most favorite events. Uh, I was there at the last time we were together in person, and I brought my wife. It was amazing. Unfortunately, this week is our sort of it's Black Friday, Cyber Monday week, and so it's sort of our Super Bowl for our 1.7 million stores. So I'm basically bouncing between uh, Toronto and Ottawa all week, but I, I wish I was there with all of you. I heard Black Friday was an absolute blockbuster for Shopify this year. Can you give us some of the metrics around that? Yeah, Black Friday was. There was a lot of talk initially that Black Friday – and Cyber Monday, for that matter, so what, what, what is now sort of referred to as the Cyber Five from Thursday of Thanksgiving to the Monday, that because the weekend was really turning into a season that we weren't going to see the same amount of, of, of GMV. But actually, we saw total global sales on Friday alone, uh, about $2.9 billion, which is a 21% increase from 2020 and more than double 2019. <clears throat> the reason, by the way, that's important for those of you that are, that are watching this is, is, you know, it's not just a sort of cool Shopify flex. Shopify really is a proxy for independent retail. And we came out with these numbers. We, we did about 6.3 billion for the entire four-day weekend, about 23% year-on-year growth. When you compare that to numbers that came out pretty much the same day on Monday from Adobe, which really measures more of the big box retailers, you saw flat numbers. And so, you know, we we talk about at Shopify, we're trying to arm the rebels, the independents, the entrepreneurs, the you know, the people consumers' favorite direct-to-consumer brands, and it looks like this BFCM weekend, uh, they were the winners. Wow. Okay, so from Black Friday, let's take a look into the future. You know, Harley, this session's called Talk to Me About the Future, so I want yeah. to get your perspectives. We worked on these amazing retail forums, which I know you were able to be a part of. Talk to me about supply chain. What have you learned? You know, everyone, you know, yesterday here on stage, we we're talking about like supply chain issues, you know, coming from our state of fashion report with McKinsey. But for the entrepreneurs and rebels and, you know, all those people building businesses using Shopify as a platform, how should they be thinking about supply chain in the future? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, look, I, I think that supply chain complexity uh, is putting pressure on every single business. But I think that consumers still want to buy from independence as much as possible. One of the things that I think uh, folks and, and frankly the industry is getting completely wrong is that there's this assumption that the larger retailers, Home Depot, Walmart, for example, because they have uh, larger GMV, because they're larger businesses, that they can charter their own boats and, 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 and create their, their own containers. And it may look on the surface like big box retailers actually have, can fare better than independents. We have not seen that. In fact, I think the missing part of the, of the supply chain story is that a lot of direct to consumer brands have much stronger margins than the larger retailers who in some cases like Costco are operating at around a 12% um, margin. So because these direct to consumer brands, these, these independents have larger margins, I think they can absorb things a lot easier, whether it's supply chain or it's even things like, you know, labor shortages or inflation better. That is a story that's not being told. And again, I don't, I don't think supply chain is going to be an issue long term, I think it's going to be, it is a short term issue. And so that absorption will happen. The other thing that we saw was in 2020, we saw Cyber Monday, Black Friday shopping start about 19 days ahead of Black Friday. And this year it started about 28 days ahead. So we really did, we did see the consumers because they had transparency with the brands, they knew what to expect. They really did, did start shopping much earlier. And then probably finally, I would say on supply chain is that we saw this massive increase in these warehouse management app downloads. So we, uh, leading up to BFCM. So we saw 26% growth in these warehouse management apps uh, being downloaded by our merchants, which indicates that these merchants were looking for ways to, to do faster shipping whether it's by using third-party fulfillment warehouses, by using technology partners. Flexport, obviously, is coming up a lot right now. But in the end, we didn't necessarily see massive declines in sales based on supply chain issues for these 1.7 million independent stores on Shopify. Uh, we had a presentation earlier this morning. Uh, Harley, I don't know if you were watching. It was uh, by some of our friends at the Future Laboratory, and they were talking about the word flexibility and agility as being absolutely critical as we think about the future. In your 
experience, you know, working with the merchants and, you know, entrepreneurs on Shopify. What does that mean for these smaller companies that may be, you know, we think they can all be more nimble and more agile. Is that true? Yeah, it's actually one of the things we talked a lot about over the summertime when you and I were hosting these forums about this idea of consumer choice and this idea of retail being everywhere. You know, if you just look at the last couple of integrations or partnerships we've announced, uh, you know, from TikTok to Instagram, more recently Spotify. So now uh, artists on Spotify can easily connect to their merch store um, through Shopify. I know that's a little bit confusing, but part of that is not because we think the future of retail is going to be on Spotify or on TikTok or on Instagram. I, I think the, the the best brands that, that I've spoken to, and many of them have come from introductions from you, uh, and Imran, and I'm, I'm grateful for that, they really understand that there's no silo between digital and physical, that it's all just retail. And I think we're seeing these, these incredible merchants using brick and mortar locations to better invest in things like showrooming. We're actually watching a lot of the in-person uh, retail experience, turning salespeople, uh, people that work in the store, into consultants, into cons uh, concierges, where they're doing training and they're creating these really great experiences. And and so, one, I, I think brick and mortar locations are becoming fulfillment centers, and online stores are also becoming sort of catalogs. So there's sort of this weird blending happening, which I think is very, which is a good thing. Also, reimagining the roles of employees, store employees acting more like experience hosts, as I mentioned, where brands give them tools to better serve customers. I think that's certainly happening. But I also think that ensuring that consumers have a very consistent experience across these channels is still something that needs to be worked on. For a lot of the more traditional brands that are beginning to think about, like I said this on the summer, and I think you laughed at me and sent me a text message after, but I said to you, I said to the group, um, I think that omni-channel or multi-channel commerce, talking about that, will be like talking about a color TV in the future. No one really says color TV. Every TV is of course a teller, color TV. I think that's what we're going to see when it comes to retail. Every single successful retailer will not look at these different channels as different businesses with different P&Ls, but rather just a seamless experience. And I think consumers want that. Okay. Last quick question, mobile commerce. You know, you know everyone's now basically just shopping from their phones all the time. What are you advising young emerging companies or like big DTC companies on their strategy for mobile commerce? Yeah, I, I think that this idea of mobile is, 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 is not quite yet at the color TV stage yet where just assume that most people are going to be browsing, shopping, uh, you know, snacking on mobile when they have some extra time. Two things though that have emerged in a really big way in the last six months. The first is social commerce. I was on stage at Voices two years ago talking about social commerce. I think at that point, all of everyone watching me was somewhat skeptical that this, you know, this tech guy was talking about like the future of commerce being on on TikTok or Facebook or Pinterest. What we now know is a third of young adults are shopping via social media. So that, that's not, that, that isn't a prediction, that is what is happening. Happening. We are seeing massive uh, growth in our in our social commerce channels happen across Shopify. Uh, it is not just them browsing, looking on Instagram or looking on TikTok. They're actually shopping directly on those and checking out on those apps. And much of that's powered by Shopify. The second thing is we also I also talked about on stage live selling that this is something that started in the in the, in the east and was moving to the west uh, Western world. That actually is happening from August to October 2020 installs for live selling apps on Shopify increase by 40%. So this is no longer something that brands are experimenting with. This is actually happening. And then finally, I just think unique online store experiences, whether it's, you know, 3D technology, um, you know, Jimmy Butler, for example, launched a coffee line on Shopify recently, and he had great coffee. He also had incredible NFTs, and the NFTs were immersive experiences into how Jimmy Butler, the superstar basketball player, makes coffee. These experiences are getting much better. So whether it's augmented reality or it's 3D technology, that is happening. But when you bring all these things together, these aren't necessarily individual technological advances. What you're, what you're seeing is a much easier way to engage with consumers in a way that has never been possible before. And actually, I'm as, about as bullish as I've ever been for the future of retail and commerce and brands um, because I'm seeing what consumers want. And um, I don't know, I, I think the rebels are winning. Okay, um, Harley, last time we talked about voices, you said you wanted to DJ at the after party. I, I did. So that's not gonna be possible this year, but I hope next time we'll have the conversation in person. I hope so too. Thank you so much for having me. It's a great honor. Thank you so much, Harley. Thank you.